Oh, yeah, yeah, we call him uh, Lucy. 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 Uh, Good Lucy. You have no lawyer. <laughs> Who cares? I never knew he could cut his hair short. <laughs> Honorable Justice Dahiru Mustafa, GCON, the immediate past Chief Justice of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has had a rewarding career in the judiciary. He was born in this family house in Babura, in Babura local government area of Jigawa State on the 14th of July, 1942. My parents were late Alhaji Mustafa Babura, and Hajia Hadiza Mustafa Barbara. I'm lucky that my mother is alive and she's with me in this house. But my father died about uh, 22 years ago. He died at the district head of Barbara. His mother, Hajia Hadiza Mustafa, tells us about his early days. She Baba Nauku Tumbe Ia Rare Fever Nabar Gidonsu Bama Taradish Young Wong wants a cat of Jesu Kari Wabadi Hajia Lunakana de la Baran Toko Kakarmania who was to man and empty. You take a Jesu. Shaggy daddy, the she hay you. You said Akasashi a macaran tama by a banner, you don't so. Now you want our netto of Mujin now, the carry of an inzo ungashi. Tina Sam, Auntie Ansashi a macaranta. Ansashi a bako, Ansashi a macaranta, Yenaraka Subasher macaranta. Shiva Asashiba. Rakasiki Yansa. It don't unpack the abu a macaranter. This chess a castle by the Amusa. She say you by the Amusa. To under the equal sashimi macaranter. I don't want any dangers there. Check your family magana no shugu. Kaji the little sugar some macaranta. Her own duty, Alliasa Akakashi, Alliasa at the Ingila. The Mustafa family of Barbara is a large one, and each person is his brother's keeper. Yes, uh, both my father and his senior brother uh, had, amongst, had between themselves over 30 children. And we were very, very close. In fact, you know, it is uh, in Hausa culture and understanding. In fact, the word cousin does not even exist. We were all brothers and sisters and looking after ourselves. We were all very, very close, just as one family. There was no difference whatsoever. As it were, my father looked after all the children of his senior brother. In fact, all of them lived at one time or the other with him. The young Dahiru enrolled into primary school by Providence. From uh, our house at Barbara, I was following my seniors to the school and I would be standing by the window listening to what was going on in the classroom. And um, a senior people in the school at one time or the other put me in the school. And coming to school, he had nothing to do. He would go and stand by the window. 
listening quietly to what is happening in the class. Now, at that time, the admission into Barbara Primary School was every other year. We went in January 58. The next class came in January uh, 1950. And still, Mr. Fah was too small to be admitted into primary school. Because the rules were that you must be of seven years age, old. Uh, yes, your age must be seven years. He wasn't seven years. I think maybe about four, five, at most five years. So I noticed that a question would be asked in the class, having spent about two years or so, they find it difficult to answer. Mustafa standing by the window would raise his hands and give the answer correctly. So I told the headmaster, look, this little kid is much, much more intelligent than most of the pupils in this class. I think it would be better if a way is found to admit him into this class. He said, but he will pose a problem. A problem in the sense that he is not up to the age. Two, they have already gone far beyond, uh, uh, far, far ahead of him in the studies, despite the fact that he could do it. But I know what to do. So one afternoon, I think it was around 52, in the middle of 1952, he came to the class, went in the class, listened to the teacher, came out, Mustafa was still standing patiently in the sun. So he went quietly behind him and grabbed his hands. He became frightened. He said, no, 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 no. I was not going to do anything to you. Let's, I want you to come to my class, I mean to my office. Let us talk over, ask you a few questions. So he went. He was asking Daharu this question he would answer, that question he would answer in arithmetic, in, in whatever was being taught in the class. Daharu would virtually answer correctly. I said, good. Do you want to be admitted? He said, yes, because I had no playmates in the house. Everybody is attending school. I'm the only one who is left behind. So then was all right. So the following day he called me, he said, I think you are right. This guy is intelligent. But he will pose a problem still. They are already writing, using the pencil to write their exercises and this and that. His problem is how does he catch up? He said, give him time. So it was a cement flow. So sand was brought from outside, spread, so that you could start using his finger to learn how to write some of these uh, ABCD and others, and some construct them into the house. In no time, he caught up. They took the common entrance examination to Bodin Primary School, I think in Bunnukudu. Dahir Mustafa passed. Most of them failed. And I went to Burnukudu Senior Primary School, or Middle School, as it was called in those days, from January 1954 to December 1956. We met in Abodum Primary School. Um, actually, he was my senior by about a year or so. But he, even as, I mean, as, as my senior, we were very close to each other. He was one of those persons that I admired. Uh, very intelligent and very cheerful and uh, he was very much in love with the English language. And we even teased him by saying that he memorized a uh, Macmillan dictionary in his head. Well, of course it was a joke, but that's, what, that's how, uh, we, how, we, how, how, how we saw him at that time. Even though we are doing everything in Hausa, nothing in English, I try to better myself in the English language. As a matter of fact, I started memorizing the dictionary, Oxford Learners Dictionary. And um, from there, I was uh, really um, interested almost in every other subject. What was it like at the boarding school? Well, in the boarding school, we were getting things just like we were getting at home. It was no different from the situation at home. Mm -hmm. They are feeding us properly, looking after us. 
given us uh, even pocket money and the uniforms, etc. So everything was really, uh, there is, was no change from what he's obtaining at home, as far as I was concerned. Okay. And uh, of course, we, I knew that um, one has got to work very hard. I know in those days, even there was no, when we come for holidays, for example, there was no electricity where people can, uh, you know, read like that. So the wives of my father were given allowance, money, to buy pet, uh, kerosene for hurricane lamp. Okay. I was also being put, and you know, I was also made to enjoy that uh, allowance okay. because everybody would be sleeping and then I would be reading. And then I went to Kano Provincial Secondary School, now called Rumfa College Kano, from January 1957 to December 1962. At the Provincial College, Dairu Mustafa showed early signs of love for the law profession with the way he argued his way out of trouble. Sometimes we may decide to elope into the town, to go without permission into the town. And there, when you are in a boarding school, you are not allowed to be in the town unless it is either Friday or Sunday. So, when we are met either with a teacher or with a prefect, you say, why are you in the town? I hear you say, let me speak. If it is a, a prefect, you will say, I'm in town because you are in town too. The law covers, the regulation covers you and me. Say, ah, say, but, but I come here in order to find out people like you. He said, he will say, in Islamic law, you are not allowed to intrude into a person. Whatever he is doing, you should not go and spy him. <laughs> so this is, you keep quiet, the matter will come to the school and he will repeat himself. And usually people will say, that is right. Why you as a prisoner, you should be in town. That's why you are showing them bad, bad manners. That's why they are, they are there. And the reason he told you, our Arabic teacher will call, he said, it's correct. It's correct. It is the Islamic law. That you don't, you don't spy on a person and see what is he doing. If he is doing something wrong, I will take him to the police. I will take him to the police. It's not allowed. When he sees a teacher, uh, he said, why are you in the town? He will say exactly the reason. If we went to buy something which is not within the school compound, he will tell him that we just cross to buy either groundnut or soap or sweet or something. We are not here just to roam about. And uh, usually teachers accept what they will say, what you see, you, see uh, you should have asked for permission. Who were his classmates? Uh, my classmates were so many, and a lot of them, you know, ended up, uh, we being together. I could talk of uh, lawyers, there was Justice Ardi Muhammad, who retired as presiding justice of the Court of Appeal here in Abuja. As a matter of fact, it was him who made it possible for me to read law. We were classmates in the secondary school. Another classmate of mine was General Sani Abacha. We entered the secondary school at the same time uh, in 1957, as I told you. There were Wada, late Wada Abu Bakr, who was the deputy governor of Kano State at one time. He also followed me to become a lawyer, although junior to me. At one time, he served 
even at the chief registrar of the court when I was the chief judge of Kano State. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another classmate, Modibu Abubakar, who also served, he's late now. He served as a judge of the High Court of Jigawa State. He also was by far behind me. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of other schoolmates mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, some, are, some are alive, some are dead. Even our monitor, we used to have a, our class monitor is still alive. He's in Kano. Uh, I mean, we are higher. And we used to, we have to have, we have some meetings, etc. Those of us that are alive. From secondary school, I think about 11 of us are still alive. While at the school, he was nicknamed Lucy. And that has stuck with him till today. Well, I, I, I can I remember the nickname. The boys called him because of his uh, kind attitude. They called him Lucy. And when he came here to tell me that he has been appointed Chief Justice of the Federation, the first um, thing I said, I said, well, good Lucy. I'm happy that Lucy has become uh, 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 Chief Justice of the Federation. Yes. How did he come about the nickname in the first place? Let us hear from Lucy himself. Uh, you know, Lokai, that is ma in mathematics, was all beyond everybody. So I was bragging to my classmates, my schoolmates, even those that were in the senior class did not know anything about it because it was taught in the secondary school. So I got the name Lucy because they, it was L-O-C-I. <laughs> So people started calling me Lucy because of uh, my bragging about knowledge of that mathematical uh, <laughs> situation. Did he have any role models in school? Oh yes, of course, definitely. I mean, especially I was interested, as I told you, in English. And then the debating society was the highest uh, thing. We got a student's parliament. And then the, I think the speaker then was one late ambassador, Mahmoud Abu Bakr, he's dead now. So everybody wanted to emulate him in his spoken English. And there was also another chap called Badei Ahmed Wali, 